Welcome back YouTube. In this video I want to discuss uh, hopefully briefly the uh, little bit about the M16 series of rifles. I want to hopefully just keep this in a nutshell. And the main points I want to drive across in this uh, video are basically just the characteristics that make the uh, M16 slash AR-15 such a uh, viable platform uh, for today's uh, both commercial hunters, uh, target shooters, law enforcement, military, you name it. And uh, hopefully, you know, it'll be straight to the point here. Um, the basic M16 that you see here, and variants of which, entered service of the United States military beginning in 1964. Special operations in Vietnam were issued the rifle initially, and uh, they experienced some minor problems with the uh, rifle in the early trials and the early years of the Vietnam War. At the time, soldiers were uh, kind of clamoring to get their hands back on the M14, you know. They didn't know a lot about the rifle. It was uh, still kind of a new and strange design that fired an intermediate cartridge compared to the uh, larger 308 or 762 by 51 NATO uh, that was fired by the M14. Uh, this uh, weapon system basically used a lighter cartridge allowing a soldier to carry more ammunition on him and that was kind of one of the you know the main points of uh, the adoption of this type of firearm was to make it easier to arm troops and field them with more ammunition and things like that. Uh, they worked all the quirks out of it. A lot of it had to do with the uh, types of ammunition they were making at the time. The ball powders they were using tended to uh, gunk up real bad and would just cause the uh, gun to just be pretty much inoperable in the field. And a lot of the problems they were having too is that the early guns weren't really issued with the proper cleaning materials and uh, soldiers tended to kind of have the uh, you know overall opinion that the, the gun didn't need to be cleaned at all and a lot of them uh, paid for that mistake with their lives uh, when their gun seized up on them and just wouldn't operate anymore. You had a lot of guys in Vietnam that were picking up Kalashnikovs and using those uh, instead of the M16s. And once they uh, got all the problems worked out, um, it tended to be, you know, good firearm. And this particular variant of rifle has been in service with our military since 64 and uh, continues to uh, soldier on to this day. Um, I used a uh, M16 A2 in Iraq. Actually, mine was an A3. It had a rail system. There's a lot of vari uh, variations of this rifle in terms of uh, what's in service with the military today. Uh, the A1 uh, designations are usually uh, semi-automatic and full automatic only. Um, around the mid-80s, the uh, Marine Corps and Army put in to have an M16 A2 designation, which what they were mainly wanting was a rifle that would fire three round bursts instead of full automatic. So they did away with the full automatic feature and went with just the three round bursts. And uh, the whole idea behind them doing that was that they wanted to keep soldiers from, you know, panicking and emptying whole, whole magazines. And uh, they were trying to concentrate at the time more on uh, the whole soldier mentality in terms of one shot, one kill, and teaching better marksmanship and things like that. And that's mainly why they tried to get away from the full autos. A lot of your Special Forces guys today, they still use full auto M16s uh, for their operations and things of that nature. Um, you will occasionally find older M16A1s uh, still in use in National Guard armories, uh, reserve armories, and things of that nature. Um, but for the basic gist of it, that's, that's pretty much the basics uh, of the M16 as a designation. Now what you see here, this is a civilian. AR-15 variant. This one's made by Olympic Arms. Uh, what you basically have here, here it uh, retains the A2 buttstock. You have a short carbine length barrel. This is not a full length barrel. You have shortened hand guards. So this particular rifle here is kind of more of a uh, hybrid on the overall M16 profile. You do retain the A2 carry handle style, uh, which is not so popular uh, so much anymore uh, as it used to be all right. What I have in the foreground here, this is one of the newest things. We've got a Smith & Wesson M&P 15. This particular rifle is uh, equipped with the newest uh, Magpul furniture, collapsible M4 type stock. It's a uh, four position. We've got flip-up emergency back backup sights. 
and this particular rifle here is a flat top which basically the reason you have a flat top is so you can add your uh, ACOGs, aim points or your little fancy uh, accessories you want to bolt onto this thing. You could take your CCO and put it in the front and if you got a PVS-14 you can mount your uh, night vision optic behind here and you got a, a good little nighttime snooping rifle. Add a can on this and you're good to go. Uh, M&P-15, Smith & Wesson is a good, good little setup here. One of the things I want to hit on with the AR series of rifles as it pertains to you, the person that's watching this, is that you have a lot of modular capability with them. There's a lot of triggers, accessories, stocks, components, things of that nature that are, that are made for these rifles. And that gives it a characteristic that's favorable to people that are looking to, um, you know, experiment, play around with different, uh, all kind of different stuff. We're going to take this uh, m and 15 here. Pop this pin here. Give me a little bit of trouble. All right. You know what? I'm bored with 5.56. I don't want to shoot 5.56. I want to shoot some 5.7. So I'm going to take my 5.7 upper and I'm going to pop it on. All right. Do my functions check. I'm ready to shoot 5.7. In this rig, the brass from the 5.7 ejects down the magwell, and this takes standard uh, PS90 magazines. So that just gives you an example of the uh, modular capabilities of the AR-15, and it's just one of the things that makes it such a neat weapon system. You've also got the fact that, of course, the 5.56, 223 Remington, what have you, being a standard NATO caliber, um, that particular characteristic is a handy thing to have. Anytime you've got a rifle that's chambered uh, in a NATO caliber, it's always a good thing to have. Now, I will admit, I'm not a very big fan of uh, this series of rifles. That's why you don't see me uh, playing with them too often on my videos. But anybody that doesn't have one really is crazy. Because, uh, you know, just for, for having one for a rainy day, for, you know, potential uh, scenario, things going haywire, it's always a good idea to have a couple of ARs laying around. So, not my favorite rifle in the world, but, uh, you know, I did serve with one, and it served its purpose fine for what I needed it to do. I never had any malfunctions out of mine. It always worked when I needed it to. And nice, light, handy package. I suppose in the big scheme of things, you can't really ask for much more than that.